you know what the here's a here's a, I know you're tired of answering questions, but here's another question. Do you know what the A stands for in cat? Uh adaptive? Adaptive. Exactly. So all that means is the test is adapting to you as a test taker. So when you answer a question, right? Say you you're on question number 1. If you get that question correct, the next question it feeds you is going to be slightly harder. And then say you get that question right, the question after that, again, slightly harder. And then question number four, you get it wrong. The next question is slightly easier. All that means is it's taking your input from the previous question and your answer and then feeding you kind of the next question to get to your like knowledge and skill level. So that's what we mean by adaptive. It's responding to you as the test taker. If you open the hood of a cat, what's happening is it's trying to get you to a level where you get every other question wrong. So what that means is on exam day, passing could mean getting like 55% of the questions correct. So when you are doing your practice questions now, life is good because you're getting 80% correct. On exam day, it's going to be a weird feeling because you could be doing well and being sort of on the route to passing, but getting like 55% of them right. So it's going to be a weird experience. You're going to feel like you're getting punched in the face every other question, but that's normal. So just walk in expecting that. Yeah, and I saw that like there's a range of questions, whereas mm-hmm. like, you know, with Sec Plus, it was a set number of questions. I forget off the top of my head how many it was, but Well, I, sort of. Sec Plus is up to 90. Up to 90. So okay. you could see anywhere from like 85 to 90. But yes, point taken. Like but with this one I saw I think it was 125 to That's 175. Right. It's a pretty wide margin there. Right. Exactly. So and the interesting thing about that is so the minimum, let's clarify those numbers. The minimum that you're going to see is 125. So you are definitely going to see 125 questions, at least no matter who you are on exam day. After 125, the test could end at any point. So what that means is, again, testing at question 125, whether you're above or below this thing called the passing threshold. And if you are above at 125, you pass. If you are below at 125, you fail. If you're straddling that passing threshold at 125, it keeps feeding you questions until you're clearly above or below. Now, that sort of feeding, those extra overtime questions, can go all the way up to 175. So here's the important thing from a time management perspective. You need to anticipate seeing 175 questions. You need to walk in there planning to see 175. Because imagine if you run out of time at question 150, well, then, then you're going to fail, right? Because then you basically, the, the machine doesn't have enough sort of data on you and it looks back at your last 50 questions and sees whether you're above or below the passing threshold. And if you're below at any point, then you fail. That's a long way of saying, I don't think the technical pieces matter. You're not going to pass if you run out of time. But it also, kind of on the same line of thought, if I'm at question 170, I'm still in the test. I'm still, because it would have failed me if I was too low already. So I should still treat those last questions with the same level of seriousness as question 126. So you actually need to be more focused and more serious questions 126 to 175. What I mean by that is that think of it as like overtime in some senses because every question matters. Because there are 50 experimental questions on the CSSP. 50, that's a lot. Yeah. But they are all built into the first 125. Okay. So what that means is questions 126 to the end, there are no experimental questions. Everything matters. Everything is going to affect your score and going above or below the passing threshold. So you need to be like uber focused. And then I know we've talked um, earlier about the time management piece. That's why you want to spend more time on those questions from 126 to 175, because those are the things that will make or break your score. Awesome. Thank you. That, that, that explanation really helps clarify the differences between a CAT and a traditional exam. So I know that it helped clarify, but how are you feeling? Are you feeling any less anxious? Uh, definitely less anxious. It's, I think it's always better to know what you're dealing with mm-hmm. than kind of sitting there in, 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 in ignorance. But uh, definitely would say the exam is still intimidating, but mm-hmm. I think that nothing's going to change that. I think I just kind of have to go and get it done with. That's right. And, and look, ultimately, too, I, I think you kind of hit the right balance. You don't want to be thinking about like how the cat operates on exam day. You don't want to be like, oh my gosh, this is an easy question. Does that mean I get a question wrong? Like, you're just going to psych yourself out and not focus on the content. And ultimately, it's an exam of whether you know your stuff or not. 
Time management is important. Test day strategy is important. Absolutely. But ultimately, the content, whether you know your stuff, that's the thing that's going to, you know, take you to the promised land. Yeah. Content is king. Content is king. <laughs>